Hello and welcome back to my Let's Build a Titan Rooster series. This is part four. Um, this will be me working on the flight controller and the PDB to get those all soldered up and ready to go. So it's going to be lots of soldering and lots of montages. Um, so I just cover a couple of bits and pieces before I start. Um, really appreciate those people who have been commenting and sharing my video. Um, it's really nice to sort of see people's positive messages around what I'm doing and um, those types of things. So that's really good. Thank you very much for sticking with me. Um, also, I've had a few little bits come through in the post while I've been away. Um, so I've now got um, some 3D printed parts, so uh, these will come from uh, MRS who do uh, they do a lot of uh, 3D printed bits and pieces for various drones and um, they've got all the chameleon parts so these come from those. Um, I can't remember the guy's name who designed them but you can find them on Thingiverse if you want to print them. I'll dig him out and reference him somewhere. Um, so yeah, it's a camera mount so I use um, a Runcam 3 because I'm a cheapskate and didn't want to pay for a GoPro it does a good job it's not a bad camera um, probably will replace it at some point but it does a good job and that simply slides in and that goes on top of the bracket here and also a rear plate so a replacement rear plates and this basically the pigtail runs through the back here I can then put this in into the little hole, that keeps it nice and simple. And I also have a, so the antenna tubes come out of the back. So that will fit to the, the back and replace the current carbon fibre plate. So that's a nice, uh, a nice addition, so I'm happy with that. Um, it is grey. Um, I went with grey. I was hoping they'd be a little bit more silvery, but at the end of the day, it's kind of a grey, silvery, blacky build. So I'll survive with that. My other ones are very orange, so we'll see what we end up with. But that's what I've ordered. Um, also, between this video and the last video, I did um, make some changes. I flipped the direction of the um, XT60 round. I wasn't 100% happy because I thought it was actually going to start rubbing against the. Um, flight controller giving it vibrations which you want to try and avoid as much as possible so I decided to do that and also I've put some uh, bolts in uh, or nuts in just between the flight controller and the rubber standoffs um, to make sure that they can move around and that I could get them to the right level of sort of torque on there so um, I've done that too. Um, the other thing I suddenly realised that I had forgotten to do was to put on a capacitor. So um, the idea of putting a capacitor is it smooths out the power distribution um, and it means that you get less interference. I mean there's probably better things that people can say. Um, the Matek F405 um, SD, uh, STD sorry, uh, does come with one. Uh, it is uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, 35 volts at uh, 470 so not massive um, I do have various other ones that I've used historically I can't find any at this moment in time to hand yeah so um, I have used some slightly larger ones before um, I've yet to figure out exactly where I'm going to put this yet so I'll probably do that in this video and add that in um, but I just wanted to give you guys a little catch up so um, without further ado let's get back into building this drone so what I'm just going to do is I've just cut two little bits of uh, wire off the ESCs. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to solder them onto the power cables so I can fit the capacitor onto there. And that way it stays out of the way and out of the middle of the build. Um, so I'm just going to just do that now. So capacitors. Um, so capacitors have a long leg and a short leg. The long leg is positive and the short leg is negative. I don't need it to be quite as long as this, so I'm just going to clip these down a little bit just and make sure that I keep one of them longer than the other. So I still know which one is which. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to solder this to this, and then I'm going to use a little bit of heat shrink just to solder it together. And um, because I've done this, the joint doesn't quite go together, but I'll just wrap that up in heat shrink, and that should be absolutely fine. So 
I'm now going to start shortening up some of these uh, ESC wires. So all they need to do is, if you can see on here, I'm going to use the end of this, um, the black neutral ground wire just needs to go to this pad just here, and then the live wire goes to this pad just here. So I need hardly any of this cable, I want as little as possible. Now one of the things about um, this particular board is it only has one ground, um, so you want to put the ground cable from uh, your signal to the ground cable point um, for the same as the ground for uh, the ESC, the main power. So you want to join those together. So I'm just going to start doing that. I'm just going to separate out these um, signal and ground wires. The reason they're linked together in such ways, um, it's meant to be better for the signal um, that the ESC, the signal wire is wrapped around the ground because it means there's no signal going near it, which means it gives a clearer signal. In this scenario, what I want to do is I want to get the signal wire, oh, sorry, the ground wire here. I want to shorten that up a little bit because I don't need it to be anywhere near as long as it is. I want to get that so that's clear that off and I just want to bring that round this ground wire so that these two join together I've done a very bad job of so I just want to get some solder which I've now have to lose it's going to So I don't know if you notice the difference there, so I keep talking about the difference between um, silicon wire and um, normal wire. This wire here, the, the coating just melts the moment you put any heat near it, um, whereas the silicon wire takes the heat, so it looks a lot nicer. And it's a lot easier to use. So I'm going to do the signal wire first, because it's the smallest. That one's going to clip a little bit of the end off it because I've made it just a tiny bit too long. I'm going to put that against it. don't know if you can see all of this. There we go. That's one done. Looks like a bit of a mess, but they should be strong enough to do what they need to do. They're shiny, so they are okay. They are strong enough, uh, and I'll sort out the height of this afterwards. So effectively now, the next job is to do the same thing on each of the corners. So that is all my ESCs soldered in, so they are now in place. I have made an e almost deliberate error that I haven't soldered the audio wire underneath yet, so I'll need to go and do something around that, but that's the ESCs in. Um, so now I have the XC60, which I'm not happy with, but will do the job for the time being, and I also then have my ESCs all soldered up, so I should be able to next move on to the flight controller right so before I move on to the flight controller I just want to revisit something that I've actually changed between takes of this video um, so I have stood my drone up on a torture device um, um, so I have changed how I've done the XT60 I wasn't happy with it I, it looked awful so I have changed it over so I've separately wrapped the capacitor so I can change that out if I need to and also wrapped up the main part of it I'm happy with that now so that looks good um, so my next part is to take the cable for the audio I've moved the flight controller the PDB out ever so slightly so I can solder on the audio cable so next thing I do is do the audio cable and sort out the camera cables um, and that will then move on to the flight controller so now looking at the audio cable which is this 
nice little green cable. Um, it'll be different colours on different cameras, and this one it's a green cable. Um, it is very, very long and has a um, connector on the end of it for plugging directly onto a servo type connector. I don't need any of that, but I do want to have the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work out how long I need, which is probably no more than about that. Get myself my snips, give that a quick snip. There we go. Strip off the end. So that's the audio on. So I can now return the like uh, the PDB into the right position. Right, so the point you join me at now, I'm going to be soldering up all the little items I need to connect to the flight controller. I've put the flight controller on just so I can give myself an idea of how long the cables that need to be. So I've got the camera cable already attached to the camera as itself at the moment. Um, so I've got coming out of there a signal, ground and current. So 5 volt coming out of that. So that will just be a fairly straightforward cut and solder. Um, and then I've got a small buzzer, a powered buzzer. So that needs three cables going to it which is a uh, buzzer 5 volt and ground and then I also have the receiver that I need to also do so that's also a it's an S bus cable which is just a normal cable um, a 5 volt and ground so I just need to do the usual thing of tinning those up um, I'm going to start by just doing the camera cable first because I think I can scavenge quite a lot of the cable I need from this one so first thing I'm going to do is assess how long the cable needs to be. So I'm give myself a little bit of room to manoeuvre because I want to be able to remove the the bits and pieces from this every now and again. So I reckon about here is probably about right. So just give that a little snip. Then it's going to spread the wires out ever so slightly. Strip the ends of my fingers. <laughs> Okay, and then we're looking to, on this board, luckily they are all here. So we've got camera, 5 got volts, and ground. So just a tiny little solder on each one of those. I'm going to turn the temperature down a bit because I am quite high because I've been doing the PDB. So let's go turn it down to about 380C. So I don't want to melt anything so I'll try and put it through the holes because I think it gives a nice clean build if I do that but I'm not always very good at getting them directly through the holes and I think from trying to get them so you guys can see probably won't necessarily be that easy okay so that's the camera all soldered up um, the reason I could do this is because most because the, the cable that goes between the transmit uh, the the cable that goes underneath this this nice ribbon cable that will go in um, transfers all of the signal data uh, for the video through that so saves me a little bit of soldering so I'm just going to move on right so talk about the ribbon cable um, this is the ribbon cable the um, pack I had comes with two of them so it makes it a little bit easier so what you do in this case. So future ball here. I'm um, just reviewing what I did. I got the cable completely the wrong way around. The ribbon cable needs to go with the silver side up, or the text as you can see there. There's little black clips that you can see on the um, just on the edges. You pop those forward. You then slide the cable in. You then pop those back, and it's the same on both sides. Ignore what I've done. I'm an idiot. Let's carry on. So that's now in. It's going to put a single bolt on the top here just to keep these stationary while I do the rest of this. So. That's my video. I've now got all my signals coming through from my flight controller to from my PDB to my flight controller, which is great. So now I just need to then do my transmitter. So transmitter is I'm going to nick a cable from here to use the transmitter. So I'm going to plan to put the transmitter in this little space at the bottom here. So I very I need about. Yeah, probably about that much cable. Use the wrong cutters for that. They're not very good ends on those, so I'm just going to splay them out ever so slightly and use my decent cutters to just snip the ends. Right, so let's get this out of the way for the moment. 
bring in our helping hands. Nip that on there, hopefully you can see. So I've had to get a diagram for this because I cannot remember which one is which. So there is three pads. So I don't know if you can see here. So three pads. In my case, mine is currently this way round. So that's my signal, five volts and ground. So I'm just gonna solder those up. Good stuff. Now I need to find the bits of cable I lost, so let's get those in view as well. Splay them out a little bit. So it is signal, five volts and ground. So I want these two to switch. So I want these two to switch up, switch over, like so. There we go. So we're just going to clean off the tip of this. You don't need to clip very much off, just a tiny little bit will will do the job. Give those a little twist. Okay. Then we want to have the S bus, the 5 volt and the ground. So that is this one, it's helpfully labelled, S bus, 5 volts and ground. And if you're not happy with one of your solders, solder sucker. These are fantastic. You can then you just line it up with the solder joint, hit the button and it sucks the solder away, there we go. then you can then spit out what was there. Really useful tool, if you're getting into this I find one of these is really useful. I do have solder wick, but I prefer using solder sucker, I just find it's easier for me to use. So that's that. That then slides into this space here. So once I've tested this, I will then heat shrink this and fit it in the back end. But for the time being, that is everything I need. I'll bind that slightly later on because I, the good thing about this board is it powers the 5 volt um, rail. So therefore you get power on this when you plug in via USB. So that makes that an awful lot easier for binding. Okay. Next is the buzzer. Now I fit a buzzer um, because you end up losing them in a field or somewhere and if you haven't got one this makes it an awful lot easier to find. I use this one because it is a powered buzzer. The good thing is that you can hear this from miles away. Um, I have I predominantly fly on rugby fields and various bits like that. You can hear this from a long long way away. It is very very powerful um, so I, I can't recommend these enough. It does make a packaging challenge but I think I'll just put it on top of the flight controller um, but at the moment not too bad. So this just needs 5 volt and signal. Here is a, I think some kind of USB type cable that came with uh, I think my Runcam, Runcam 3. But I don't ever really plan to use in any particular exciting way so that is a good length of, importantly, silicon cable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down and turn this into the cable for the buzzer. Okay, so I've now soldered up those wires. So I've used a blue wire just because I like to make sure that I know what the different signal wires are. So um, live is still live, ground is still ground, the signal wire goes on there. So it's going to sold, so just going to tin up the plates on the flight controller. So I'm going to use the ground from over here. Right, so I think I've now got to a point where I've soldered everything that needs to be soldered, XT60 is on, ESC is on, they're now currently just floating away from the carbon fibre frame, carbon fibre is conductive, so you don't want it touching, because um, you'll short out various bits and pieces, um, buzzer's obviously in, um, receiver is in, flight controller's in, now the next the final step I've got to have before I actually power this up is I wanted to start connecting, checking the connectivity. So, next thing to get is a multimeter. Now, all I'm going to do is I just want to check that my grounds are still ground. So if I 
put thing, uh, ground on the ground, I get a beeping noise. If I do a ground and a 5 volt, I get nothing. 3 volt, 5 volt, no. So that's good. Ground and ground. So I think now everything is now soldered together as it should be. Um, I've polarity checked everything to make sure everything is okay. Um, I've used my, sm my smoke stopper to make sure everything's all right with that. So now I'm just going to power it up directly. Um, so hopefully I can hear the ESC spinning up um, and I should be able to see the lights on the flight controller and also I should see some lights on the video transmitter. Looks all good to me, so that all seems to be working. Um, lights flashing on the uh, transmitter as well, or receiver as well, so that's all looking good. Lights are transmitting on there, so I think we are now good. So, next video, I'll be putting everything together and I'll also be doing some work on beta flight, so um, getting everything set up and getting everything bound. So, that'll be the next video. Thanks so much, see you next time.